Have you ever asked yourself how movies and filmmakers who are professional end their music beautifully? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. So let's make this quick then. So the first thing we wanna make sure we do is listen to the way the audio sounds when it cuts off at the end. Like when you're gonna cut the audio out, what does it sound like? In this case, I'm gonna bring us to the end and I'll play it for you. Okay, so obviously it cuts off, it chops off, it doesn't have a nice ending, it doesn't fade out, it doesn't reverberate, nothing like that. If I press P on my keyboard, I can keyframe two points, press V to go back to your pointer and drag it down. I can keyframe two points and fade it out like this. But the problem I have with that is it doesn't really give me a good feeling. It feels kind of forced and it doesn't really feel like the song itself needed to stop. It sounds like someone made it stop. We want the song itself to feel like it fits the scene so well that it cuts itself off because it's the time to be done. So obviously this is the end of the shot here, but we want the audio to continue onward past you know the end for a little bit so we, we can identify that the music's fading itself away but in a, like an echoey reverberated way we're going to go ahead and add something called a effect to our audio track itself obviously it's an effect but it's going to be applied to the audio track not just the audio itself but what does that mean well first and foremost to make sure we do it correctly make sure whatever audio track you're going to affect meaning whatever Audio track contains the music. In this case, mine is audio track one. There's nothing else on my sequence. You might have sound effects or voiceover or dialogue or something like that. Make sure that whatever audio track you're going to do this effect to only, and I mean only, has the music track, the one you want to affect with this effect. You'll see up here, if you don't have audio track mixer in your window, go to window at the top, Go over here to audio track mixer, just click it. Now that we're here, you'll notice there's this little carrot in the top left, click that. And we wanna make sure that we're going to apply the effect to layer one. Right here, look, audio layer one, A1, whatever you want to call it, it's there. There's no other layers except for the one that's called mix, which is the entire sequence, every layer combined. We don't wanna mess with that. We only wanna mess with audio layer one. So at the top here, the first drop down, it says effect selection, select that. Go down to reverb, studio reverb. I want to change the amount of reverb that the audio has. So what can we do here? We have room size, decay, early reflections, you know, high and low frequency cuts. Let's go ahead and take our decay, push it up to 10,000 milliseconds. I crank that thing up. I think you can go past, and if you can't go past, just push it to the absolute maximum it lets you. Now, output level, I go to the wet down here and I bring it up to like 70 or 80. It might be too much for this audio particularly. I haven't tested it out yet. But for the most part, these two, the decay and the wet will be the ones that will affect how echoey and reverberated your audio ends up being. Uh, early reflections sometimes have a little bit of a change there, but I won't even mess with them too much for this situation. So we can go ahead and press X. Now, if we play this out, <laughs> You can hear that it has a slight reverberation, but it still cuts itself off. And why is that now that we just obviously applied this effect to it? You can hear that it's a little different. Well, if you look right here, if I zoom really close, and let's expand this, you have, I don't know, one second of extra footage where there's no audio, but this audio track is allowed to be played because remember we affected the track, not the actual layer. So the track it still has the effect applied, so it'll have that effect applied until the last moment of the sequence or the timeline itself. So in order to combat it cutting off too early, let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer. I already have one made down here. If you don't have one, new adjustment layer, set the settings, press OK. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna drag this adjustment layer on top. It doesn't really matter where it starts, but it matters where it ends. And I'll drag this thing, I don't know, out there. Now, if we come back and play it. You'll notice you still hear it. And if that didn't feel long enough to you, then let's go ahead and stretch it out more, right? And a lot of times when this effect is being used, you'll have more footage that's gonna come in afterwards. So let's say like you're going from B-roll to your dialogue or your talking head or, or like an interview. Look, you know, 
this audio will reverberate itself out and you'll have more footage. So let's go ahead and copy some footage just for the sake of making it understandable. I'll copy it like that, right? So now this will fade out and you'll have the actual audio still kind of making a noise while the footage is coming into sequence. So really you could be done, but let's take it one step further to kind of give it that extra professionalism, that extra oomph, if you would. Uh, and that's really, really simple. I'm gonna undo what I just did there. Let's go ahead and duplicate this by holding or you know, clicking Alt or Option, click on the audio, drag it down. Now you have second layers. And now we wanna do something to fix the fact that this audio, this music, is reverberating the entire time. It has a lot of reverb to it, where the original audio didn't have a lot of reverb to it. It had a little bit, obviously, it was mastered, but it wasn't as echoey as this affected layer. So let's go ahead and shrink this affected layer to just about the end here. We don't want too much of it to be playing out. Let's say that's probably good there. And in the case of what I just cut here, I'm gonna cut the opposite by dragging this part back. Have snap on, that will help you identify you know, how to actually perfectly align that. And we don't wanna put them in the same layer. And why is that? It's because we don't want this one getting the effect that this one has on it. But we want to keep the effect only on the end of the audio clip. So in this case, let's do a little bit of overlap. Do that. Let's overlap this way. And now we're going to fade this one in and this one out. So I'll start fading right at the point where they meet. Two keyframes, right click, ease that one in, ease this one out. Press V. Get the pointer tool back, drag it down. Perfect, right? So now this is gonna fade out right here. And this part will fade in. Now I notice it's the same audio, but just for the sake of it, we're gonna make sure we ease that out, ease this in. All right, so let's take it from the top. You hear that? It's still ringing. That, that's the point. Um, either which way, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. We're trying to do every Wednesday on the channel. If you haven't noticed, this is Wednesday when this comes out. Look at the date. It was Wednesday. Okay, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. See you later.